Welcome to the Recovery Cast, brought to you by Hills and Rangers Private. Welcome to the Recovery Cast, brought to you by Hills and Rangers Private. My name is Oliver and I'm a former alcoholic and addict now in recovery. The Recovery Cast is a podcast created by people in recovery from alcoholism and addiction for people in recovery from alcoholism and addiction. This podcast is meant as a support tool for those in recovery. Everyone who participates in the podcast is in an active recovery program. We are not affiliated with any one recovery methodology and will focus on a variety of different types of recovery, including 12-step recovery programs such as Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous, and other things like Smart Recovery, Celebrate Recovery, Recovery Dharma, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, and more. And a quick disclaimer, this podcast is intended to be informative. A podcast alone cannot support your sobriety and recovery, so we suggest it only as one component of a daily recovery routine. For more information on what recovery is, please go to www.rehab.melbourne. We have a really interesting and special episode planned for you today because today is the first episode where I introduce my co-host Alexis. Say hello, Alexis. Hi, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to get you on the show. I think we are going to go through a big learning curve because this has been the the Oliver show for a long time and now it's going to be Oliver and Alexis. So forgive me if I'm overbearing. (laughs) You can can call me out, tell me to be quiet, whatever you want to do. Um, (laughs) Anyway, on with the show. Let's do the reading. So we're reading from um, the JFT. Would you like to read the JFT and what date is it? Thanks, Oliver. Uh, It's November the 26th, and the reading is on responsibility. A lot happens in one day, both negative and positive. If we do not take the time to appreciate both, perhaps we will miss something that will help us grow. Information pamphlet number eight, just for today. Responsibility, responsibility. The responsibilities of life are everywhere. We're supposed to wear seatbelts. We're supposed to clean our homes. We're supposed to do certain things for our spouse, our children, and the people we sponsor. On top of all of this, we're supposed to go to meetings and practice our program as best we can. It's no wonder that sometimes we want to run from all of these tasks and escape to some far-off island where we're not supposed to do anything. At times like these, when we've become overwhelmed with our responsibilities, We have forgotten that responsibility need not be burdensome. When we have a desire to run away from our responsibilities, we need to slow down, remembering why we have chosen them and pay attention to the gifts that they bring. Whether it's a job we normally find challenging and interesting or a partner whose personality we are usually excited by or a child whom we naturally like to play with and care for, there is joy to be found in all of of the responsibilities of our lives. Just for today, Each moment is special. I will pay attention, grateful for my responsibilities and the special joys they bring. Nice. I like that. What do you think? It's pretty cute, isn't it? (laughs) Sentimental. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Responsibilities. And for me, it... um, Mm. Yeah. Well, for me, especially like in how... um, I don't know how I was kind of raised. Um, I tend to think of responsibility as something that's quite overbearing. And at times, mm. like the reading says, like can be overwhelming. Um, so being able to shift my perspective and, you know, take part in paying attention to the joys that each responsibility brings, mm. like whether it is the people that I sponsor and the way that they're, they're recovering or if it's, you know, that special time with um, my beloved friends or my partner, mm. um, you know, it's it's good to be reminded that there are joys in those moments regardless of where, like, mm. there are responsibilities as well. Mm. And it, it's a big Maybe contrast then. between what I think, at least what my life used to be like in terms of I lived a life in active addiction of very, very little responsibility and... Today, it's it's totally different. I have so many responsibilities and 
when yeah. when I was using, you know, I didn't I didn't really have any responsibilities. I wasn't responsible for anything, and even if I was, I didn't show up for that responsibility. Absolutely. I yep. just I just <laughs> shirked them all. I just got rid of, you know, mm. every responsibility, anything, whether it was a partner or a job. So many things didn't last. The only thing that I was really the most responsible for was was actually maintaining my addiction. And today, you know, the, the first thing I'm actually responsible for is my recovery. And that is... The, that for me is the is the primary thing that I need to be aware of all the time is that I need to show up. So yeah, there's a lot of supposed to things. I'm supposed to go to meetings. I'm supposed to do the steps. I'm supposed to do this and that. And it's it's really not, you know, when I, when I decided to get clean, it, it wasn't a supposed to thing. It was a I have to. Mm. And that's, there's, there's not really yeah. many things that I actually have to do, but that is, is one of them, you know. Yeah. yeah, I can relate a lot to that. Um, when I first got clean, it wasn't, I definitely wasn't thinking about what I was supposed to do because there wasn't any other option. You know, there wasn't any alternative mm. except for showing up every day. Mm. You know, no matter how much my head was pounding and no matter how much I felt resentment at my situation for having to, you know, sit in a meeting and listen to people who had more recovery than I did and seemed to understand things that I didn't, you know. Um, sometimes I would sit there and just be like, like I can't get this. I don't understand mm. this. None mm. of this makes sense. Like my, my addiction is worse than that. Mm. My, you know, like you don't know what I've been through and, um, mm. I'll never get to where they are. And, um, yeah. I don't know when I stopped making all those sort of excuses and I actually like, you know, I kind of, it's, I don't, I'm not quite sure if I even saw myself as showing up and being mm. responsible for my recovery for the first three to six months. It was mm. just doing what everyone said to do. Mm -hmm. totally. And those suggested things are what led to me having the responsibilities that I have in my life now and are what led to me being able to build and create a program that works for me in my life. Mm. Totally. So, it's, it's very yeah. much a question of like there's no supposed to – it's – show up and shut up mm. for recovery <laughs> yeah very yeah. much so mm. yeah like you come in thinking you know everything you know yeah. it but you don't well if, <laughs> well, if I, I didn't anyway yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> if i knew everything i wouldn't have ended up in rehab you know right. i have to i have to think yeah. about where i actually am and 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 you know eat some humble yeah. pie yeah and yeah. like how good yeah. is that though because through that Oh, what's my phone doing? I don't know. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to turn it on silent. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's th there's all those things that we should do, and there are the responsibilities that we that we that we get mm. through our recovery, and it actually happens. For me, it happened quite quickly as they slowly, um, yeah. Grew. Yeah, I can relate to that. I can definitely relate to that. Um, they grew and for it. yeah. How I just, I don't know, like how I started to take responsibility for myself was definitely with um with going to my very first, you know, NA meeting. Um, I didn't go to rehab, but like my recovery started in jail at um the Dame Phyllis Frost uh, Women's Prison here in Melbourne. Mm. Um. And I didn't have that option, you know, to go somewhere where I could actually reflect upon my behavior and how it was mm. impacting my life. Like I had passed that point. <laughs> yeah. I had certainly passed that point where there was no option left except for incarceration. Mm. Um, well, that was my humble pie. You yeah. know, that was my wake up call to like, you need to stop taking some serious res responsibility for your life mm. because look at where it is. Like, look mm. at Look at what you have reduced yourself to through your mm. own inability to accept the consequences of your behavior, Oof. to make the right choices, and because you want to keep hurting yourself and hurting those around you, you know. And um, mm. that was a big pill to swallow, <laughs> mm. pun intended. Well, for you know, <laughs> with with these things, you know, that the drastic change is needed. And mm. look, if if you know if that that is your experience and if you can do it then yeah. you know i i hear countless stories of people 
involved with with you know yeah jails and institutions and mm. um that's just that's just where you know alcoholism or addiction whatever you want to call it that's where it takes us and there's yeah. there's they, mm-hmm. they talk about the yets and it's like well i've never done this i've never done that yet and mm. it's only a matter of time if i think if we if we let it continue and 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 the reality is that a lot of people do let it continue it takes a lot more than just going into a facility like to get treatment sometimes uh sometimes yeah. people are incarcerated sure. sometimes people live for years and years and years in that grip of of their you know substance abuse and nothing changes and you know you know for mm-hmm. me my um experience was actually that when I went into meetings, I thought, well, maybe I'm not as bad as, as everybody else. Maybe I'm not an addict. Mm. And that's an equally cunning situation to be in because yeah. if I let that get to me, that's then I would, I, would, I, would, mm-hmm. I would go further down that path and ride that fantastic merry-go-round of, of, you know, struggle and relapse. And I literally just had to take that responsibility and say, well, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm, I was 26. Yeah. You know, the, I see a lot of people get mm-hmm. into recovery later on. And look, if, if our mm. listeners are in recovery and, and it doesn't matter where you are in your life, if you are in recovery yeah. now, or if you're getting to that point now, then grab it and don't let go. Because if you, if you let go, then, then you'll get taken by the tide of, of, of this this Absolutely. you know serious thing you know it's really really hard yeah so yeah oh man I, I love I love it's it's great having you on the show Alexis because I, <laughs> I now you. don't have to talk when I have nothing to say I can let you talk so we're gonna <laughs> yeah I know right we're, we're gonna take a break and after that we're gonna talk about this thing that I um that came to me about the reading about mindfulness and being super aware of what's going mm. on. All right, let's have a break. You're listening to the Recovery Cast by Hills and Rangers Private. Now playing daily on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. For more shows, visit us at www.rehab.melbourne. All right. You're listening to The Recovery Cast with Alexis and Oliver, and we are going to be talking a little bit about, I think it's it's basically mindfulness um, at the core of it. So in this reading, it talks about um, we have the desire to run away from our responsibilities. We need to slow down, remember why we have chosen them, and pay attention to the gifts that they bring. And I sort of thought about it, initially being about the gifts of of these responsibilities the gifts of of recovery and having the you know the freedom to choose what we do and having the rewards like the car the house the partner the food in the cupboard the you know all of those external things but I then very quickly realized that it was about a little bit more than that and that it was about the biggest gift that I've received from being in recovery is the ability to really be mindful and to experience what's going on around me without that, that sort of chemical buffer or that, that lens of intoxication that I lived with for so long. And I mean, Alexis, you didn't like, I sort of pointed that out and you were like, well, what do you think? Um, so mindfulness, um, so how, like it's something that I've only been able to get into recently in mm. um, like the latter part of my recovery journey thus far. Mm. Um, and it's, it was like, you know, I come from a trauma background and come, you know, out of jail and mm. I needed some time, I think, to be able to mm. separate myself from that um, that stress. Like mm. I was moving very quickly and um, in my early recovery, I felt that it, like I didn't quite trust mindfulness, so to speak. Mm. I didn't trust meditation and I certainly didn't trust sitting with myself mm. um, in any form, <laughs> or, you know, whatsoever. Mm. Um, 
if it wasn't a drug that was distracting me, it was reruns of the Kardashians or, mm. <laughs> you yeah. know, some like some ridiculous thing on YouTube, like some YouTube mm. deep dive or food mm. or like meetings even. I used to do, um, when I couldn't sit with myself, I would do meetings in the morning. I would do meetings in the afternoon. I would mm. do meetings at nighttime, um, especially when we went, you know, online for COVID, the start mm. of COVID. Um, 24 hour meetings. when I started yeah. to, yeah, mm. yeah. I, like the most meetings I've done in a day um, is seven mm. like, because I just I just didn't know what to do and I was so unable to be okay with sitting with myself and mm. being okay with myself and where I was in that moment. Um, and the small amount of mindfulness practice that I have brought into my life has greatly like affected that, it has changed it massively. I'm... Mm. I'm just with practicing some meditation and doing guided meditation. And um, I do these weekly sessions with a um, mindfulness um, expert, actually. His name is Dr. Chris Walsh. And he does these um, Zoom sessions weekly every Tuesday. And I've started doing those just in the last couple of months. I found it through Mm. Recovery Dharma. I found the link through Recovery Dharma. And um, those sessions have yeah impacted not only like my headspace but my like i'm sleeping better i'm i feel a lot calmer mm. i'm not stressing about the next moment and how i'm going to fill that sec those seconds up you know mm. so sorry if i'm talking too much no it's okay <laughs> i really what i loved about what you said was that i hear this a lot i can't sit with myself and mm. what i discovered through my sort of um, inquiry into mindfulness was what Eckhart Tolle talks about. He talks about in the opening chapter of his book, The Power of Now, he had a, a spiritual awakening when he was completely beside himself and, and totally suffering. And he, he exclaimed uh, out loud in his bedroom, in, you know, in the early hours of the morning, I can't live with myself anymore. And then he, mm. he realized, he said, hang on a minute, who, who is this I and who is this myself? And what he realized was that there's a separation between the I and the myself and that one of them is the true self. One of them is the soul or the, the thing that's, that's sitting behind your eyes and observing the world. And the myself is this this frontal thing that's in front of that that is the the me that that we sort of uh, I think it's the thinking mind and it's the thing that identifies and the thing that that seeks to grasp these external experiences and um, there's there's a really big difference and what he realized and what I realized as well around you know when I read his book was that that I needed to start feeding the I that's watching the myself mm-hmm. and and it was the myself that was actually causing all my suffering. Um, Absolutely. So for, for the mindfulness, I stop, I stop identifying mm. with things in terms of the myself. I stop thinking that, well, you know, our listeners might be able to hear that I've lost something um, that is that known as my voice you know I've lost my voice and I'm having to make this episode today and you know there would be mm. a lot of things but I'm just I'm just sitting you know and I'm I'm sitting with it and I'm observing what it feels like and um you know it's it I'm just living this experience and and there's no there's no sort of identification of oh I've lost my voice I don't want to do this so da, 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 da. there's no um you know and and since I've been able to to sort of nurture this experience that I've been having with them that's what I call mindfulness is just literally sitting and trying to be aware of everything as it arises not through the thoughts of of you know when when for example when I'm trying to meditate thoughts come up all the time and that's the myself that's the front Mm. the front part of the brain and um the back part of the brain is just the bit that I try and train myself to sit with and just experience things and so for mindfulness for me, the, the pay attention to the gifts that they bring 
paying attention to me means like sitting with that that eye that that thing that's watching the world from behind my eyes and yeah. the gifts that they bring is that is that actual mindfulness that consciousness um you reminded me of this quote i have written down in one of my mem- many little mm. writing book journal things um mm. and i have no idea who said it um or where I even got it from, but it's something that I've had written down for years. It's, um, I am not my thoughts nor my mm. emotions. I am yep. the awareness behind them. Yep, that's And that, that's like, um, that, that found its way into a lot of my step work, especially my step three and my step 11, mm. um, that quote. I've really had to, you know, bring myself back and just be like, I am not everything that is, like, mm. Filtering through my, you know, speeding through my mind. Mm. I am the awareness of everything that's speeding through my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, you know more that's about a really this. Really powerful than, concept. Mm. Yeah, you know more right? about this than you let on. You know, you said you. Now I know that you're you're going on that that experience as well, and I think people yeah. people that come into recovery are forced to sit with that because if we don't sit with mm. that our minds and our addiction just just sort of um get the better of us well yeah, yeah we we, yeah, we suffer yeah we suffer and yeah how how awesome mm-hmm. how awesome mm. you know, yeah it is it is really cool i actually. find <laughs> i find like what my um meditation and what my mindfulness is like is I don't necessarily have the ability to turn off that front part of my mind, but I do have the, mm. the, the act of the mindfulness is literally just being mindful of it. So I imagine myself, yeah. Yeah. I imagine myself in the street. Oh, I'm sitting on a balcony and I'm watching a parade and the parade mm. is my mind. The parade is yeah. the, is the da, 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 of, of all this <laughs> rubbish that my, yeah, that my mind yeah. brings up and, <laughs> And I'm sitting yeah. and I'm watching it. And if I'm not careful, I will get down off that balcony. And I will join the parade. And before I know it, I've been mm-hmm. carted off down the street with the parade. And then I have to yeah. remember, I bring myself back to that mindfulness and I go back and sit on the balcony again. And and that's what it is. Yes. And I think a lot and of... it's okay yeah. to do that as well, you know. It's oh, okay it's, to get yeah. caught up in those thoughts when they come up, especially during meditation. This is something that... um. Mm. I struggled with when I first started um, meditating Mm. when I began my step 11 um, just a few months ago. Um, I thought that I had to be perfect and serene and Mm. I was a total and absolute failure if Mm. um, I had one thought come into my mind and um, (laughs) I, you know, wasn't able to catch it. Um, But that's not what meditation is about and I'm really grateful for that. You know, it's a lot more chill than that, like – it's about being aware of those thoughts mm. and those feelings that pop up and being curious about them and just being like, oh, that's interesting yep. and letting it go, not taking it and holding on to it and turning it into something else, you know? Mm. And even if you fall into a sequence of thoughts from that one thought, like, that's okay. Like, you can always bring yourself back to center. Mm. You can always bring, bring yourself back to that curiosity and that awareness mm-hmm. of those thoughts. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah I've got some, cool. some bad news for our listeners. The mind is a thinking machine. That's what it does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can't stop it. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Well, and look, that's literally what I did for like t- more than 10 years of my life is I, I put things mm-hmm. into my body to quieten it down. Yeah. Because I didn't know yeah, how really to... Relate didn't know how to watch it i didn't know how to to differentiate yeah. from it because i thought that i was the mind and i am not my mind i am not my thoughts as no. you said i'm the thing that's watching yeah. them so i mean Absolutely. there's there's so many resources out there for our listeners the first yeah eckhart told mm-hmm. the power of now getting involved in in mm-hmm. mindfulness groups meditation looking it up on the internet dharma doing recovery. your own research yeah re- recovery is it dharma recovery or recovery dharma i always get confused um, I think it is recovery dharma. Yeah, yeah. I think it's whatever you want to yeah, call recovery it. Recovery dharma, which um, they utilize the um, Buddhist principles. Mm, I did um, one the other day, and like in yeah, did you? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Um, it was, yeah. What is it? The four noble truths and the mm-hmm. eightfold path. I mm-hmm. think are what they base their um, mm. their addiction recovery program around. Yeah. Um, and meditation as well. Meditation is a huge part of it. Mm. Um, I, I went, definitely recommend it. Highly recommend it mm, to anyone. Curious. I, w- I went to the to the um, recovery Dharma meeting and I saw that the 
the um, guests at Hills and Rangers Private were actually tuned in and watching the same meeting. And I was like, oh, hi, guys. So, oh, yeah, really? you know, yeah, um, okay, it's, great. it's definitely something that's used at, at Hills and Rangers Private. Um, and there's there's so many other things. The other the other one is an app called Waking Up by Sam Harris. And he is a spiritual teacher. I think he's like an atheist guy or okay. something. Um, but he's he's really into watching that that space where the thoughts come from and and trying to find out where it where it all comes from and as long as you just sit there and watch okay. the thoughts then that's that's mindfulness you know you just sit there watching the thoughts and he tries to get you sort mm-hmm. of like instead of sitting down and like I'm going to meditate now and then you watch the thoughts for 10 minutes <laughs> yeah. and then you go back to your Instagram feed and then you forget all about it yeah. he, he tries to yeah I know he tries to get you like uh doing that through your day. So when you're, when you're, you know, walking down the street, you're like watching the thoughts and you're watching the things watching around your you. Thoughts, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, that's, that's where that's I'm really at cool. now. Oh, it's, it's so hard, but really you know. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky, isn't it? It's a, it's um, a, I use the app insight timer to oh, cool. yeah, help me. Yeah. It's pretty good. Mm. Pretty good. It's, um, it's free, but it also has a paid program as well. Yeah. But, uh, like everything these days. For anyone yeah. wanting a little, any keyword that you could possibly think of that would have any sort of any link to recovery or meditation or just anything um, you can put into the search engine and there will be a meditation for it from somewhere. Oh, it's amazing. Cool. Like, absolutely amazing. Wow. So. Well, I guess, yeah, we're, we've done a huge episode today, so we're going to, I'm going to shut this bad boy down, but, um, what, okay. yeah, what, what, I guess what we can take away is that, you know, there's, there's so much to explore in recovery and mm. that all you have to do is inquire and, and more will be revealed, you know, all these things we, we learn this experience and more you know, will be mm. revealed. Mm, that's, that's what it. I talk about. All right. Well, thank you for listening Mm -hmm. to another episode of the Recovery Cast brought to you by Hills and Rangers Private. Um, www.rehab.melbourne is the website. If you want to find out more, jump on there. And yeah, thanks thanks for joining me on this journey, Alexis. I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. No worries. Um, How cool. Great. It's not just me now. We've got a co-host. So... um, Yeah, looking forward to doing more episodes in the future. Have a lovely day. Cheers. Thank you for listening to The Recovery Cast. For more, visit us at www.rehab.melbourne.